Hey my friends, what is going on? This is Pantar Dragon. And today, guess who played Sejuani? That's right, me. But guess what? There's like a little certain trend going on in Korea and stuff where players, surprisingly, aren't going after Shock, but Fleet Footwork. Why are people going Fleet Footwork on Sejuani? You know, players such as Peanut, Shrimp, Mike Young are all going Fleet Footwork instead of Aftershock. And it's really interesting, so I was like, mm, I'll try it, and uh, wow. The results compared to Aftershock are very interesting. But before we start this video, this video will be sponsored and edited by Pro Guides. If you want to do well in placements, check out Pro Guides because they have a course on how to do well in your placements. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so after experimenting with it and uh, liking it a lot more than Aftershock, I'll tell you some things that are very interesting about it. So first off with Sejuani, instead of uh, going Talisman, you actually go Machete to get a better early clear and have a more impactful early game. Since when you go in the Precision Tree, you get 18% attack speed. If you go the Resolve Tree, you get more hit point, which I guess would be only good with the Talisman since you burn the creeps more for a bit of damage, but I don't really see it too much. Either way, Talisman gives you a slower clear but more sustain. But with Machete Start, you've you're just more impactful early game. You also kind of get a little bit more sustain, but not really. I think you get maybe like 30 hit point per minute. Eh, that's kind of good, but like, yeah, the resolve tree is kind of more late game-ish, right? It's good in lower elos, but like in high elo, you need like early impactful stuff. So yeah, in ganks, having more attack speed, pretty good. You get the proc your E faster, plus having fleet footwork will make you more stickier, so you can move auto attack with your enemy and uh, stick to them more. Your clears, again, are also better, since you got that attack speed, and also Sejuani coming into season 8 had a little problem where she couldn't build attack speed because runes were removed, but now, since you're going into the precision tree, you have that attack speed back. But also, essentially, since you are going for a more impactful early game, you're sacrificing your mid game, late game tank by not having the resolve tree, aftershock, conditioning, etc. But like, let's be honest here, if you can't even make it through early game, how are you going to hit the mid game? And that's what the precision tree solves with Sejuani. Her early game, and I mean Sejuani mid game, late game, you know, with more attack speed and no aftershock, it's still really good compared to most other junglers. Since she has so much tankiness, CC, etc, initiation, it's definitely better than someone like Lee Sin or Kha'Zix, right? See, all in all, you don't really sacrifice too much. Now, okay, here's the biggest reason that is very interesting to me, and it kind of makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. So, the way Aftershock works is, you know, when you CC someone, you get a bunch of armor and magic resist for 2.5 seconds and do a bit of damage after. Okay, maybe a lot. And stacking on top of your frost armor before Aftershock, you're looking about 200 and 140 armor. When you proc Aftershock, you have about 440 armor and 300 magic resist or something like that. That looks fucking fantastic, but um, guess what? It's only for about 2.5 seconds. So, like, 200 armor compared to 440 armor, yeah, it looks good, but like, you know, the more resist you get, the more diminishing returns of reducing damage is given. So like, after 2.5 seconds, you're squishy as fuck. Since you don't have your passive and you don't have your aftershock, you're just like, you're just like a tank with a bunch of hit point. So you're basically a juggernaut for like 2.5 seconds, but needless to say, you aren't after that 2.5 seconds and you're kind of squishy unless you have armor and magic resist items at the time. But yeah, it's like counterintuitive to have your passive and aftershock going on at the same time. If your aftershock and your passive was spread out and you had like your passive proccing for 2 seconds and then aftershock coming after for about 2.5 seconds and your juggernaut for 4.5 seconds, then yeah, that'd be pretty good and kind of OP. But since most of the time you're probably going to be using both of them at the same time, it's not efficient. And yeah, that's why aftershock isn't as good as you would think on Sejuani. The 400 armor and magic resist you have when proccing it looks fucking cool, but it's not efficient. That's why when you have fleet footwork, you don't really miss too much. You're still a juggernaut for those two seconds you have your passive on, but it's not a big deal that you don't have aftershock anymore. So yeah, that kind of sums up why the precision tree is better than aftershock. You know, at first I was like, this is really stupid. I mean, yeah, the attack speed is very nice, but like aftershock is a broken 
keystone, right? But then it all kind of made sense when you have your Aftershock stacked onto your passive. And like, you don't really need those big resists coming from Aftershock since you already have your passive already, right? Like obviously on Sejuani support, you want Aftershock for trading. You wouldn't go fleet footwork on her, but like in the jungle, yeah. 18% attack speed is definitely better than 130 health or 65 health and plus five attack damage or 9% attack speed if you go it's secondary, but you know, I like the zombie ward and relentless coming from domination. So yeah. Also here are the runes that I take with her if I ever play her. And if you guys, you know, want to know, uh, not really sure what else to talk about, you know, this topic in general, I will say that right now, Sidrani is a strong champion, even though she was nerfed right now. Mmm, she is fucking fantastic. And if you ever need a good tank on your team, this is the champion to play. But yeah, hopefully that explains everything you were wondering about this little phenomenon with Sidrani going into not a tank mastery, but a AD carry mastery. Hope it explained it all. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.